Welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop. It's Steve here to start our play of V Commandos. So you see before us, this is a team that the community decided. We'll play as the Blue Sapper and the Tan Scout, and I chose to be the Tan Medic. So I've gathered the uh, tokens to represent each of these characters. Each character has uh, two tokens to represent four different states. And we'll go through those states in a little bit more detail, but basically you can be visible, stealth, uh, wounded, or in a general uniform. And I've also gone ahead and grabbed the items for each of these characters. So if you see here that's printed, anything that's got a hash mark on it means it's a starting item. So the sapper starts with a grenade and two TNT charges. And then he has his built-in Colt pistol. Uh, the scout grabbed a crowbar and his Colt pistol and the medic starts with a med pack and his Sten assault rifle. Now quick note on the items. Any green items are one-time use, and any blue items are unlimited uses. With that said, let's take a quick look at our scenario card, and we'll just jump into the game. So just a quick reminder, we're playing the shipyard, and the object is to blow up the dry docks. The dry docks are located in the two large tiles, and then once we blow those up, we have to escape. Also, whenever we blow up those tiles, uh, those tiles will actually be physically removed and any tokens adjacent to that will be removed. So the nice thing is, once we blow up these tiles, these spawn points will also be removed from the game. Okay, now let's jump into the rules. So let's take a quick look at the V Commandos game turn. So every turn in V Commandos, you start off by drawing an event card in the event phase. And then the commandos, in any order of your choosing, will take their actions. So one commando will take all their actions, then the next commando will take all their actions, and so on and so forth. After that, we'll jump to the enemy phase. The enemies can go through three separate steps where they're going to send reinforcements, they're going to move, and they're going to try to shoot. And then the last step is the end of turn phase, which is simply check for victory. And with that, we'll just rinse and repeat. So let's get started by jumping into the event phase. So let's jump into the event phase. Our first event card is... Well, this card. I'm not going to read that title to not offend our German viewers. So, But this says, during this turn, for each enemy unit eliminated, eliminate one more regular enemy unit on the same tile. So that's awesome. If you kill one guy, you can kill another guy for free. And that's the flavor text on here. The worst is yet to come. The other thing that's important to look at is this indicator at the bottom, north with the arrow up. So what that means is we have this tile on the board, near the board, this compass tile. That means that when we do um, spawn enemies and move them, if we're all stealth, they're going to be moving north if they can. So that's why that's important to know. It's a nice way you can actually plan your uh, action out in advance. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and move to commando actions. So let's take a quick look at the board and talk strategy real quick. We know that the enemies are going to try to move north as long as we're not spotted. So the enemies are going to respawn into this middle tile with the alarm, into this medium tile down here, and into two dry dock tiles because of those two spawn points up there. Now, assuming that we're not visible, they're all going to try moving north. And there's no door in this, this small tile, so anybody who spawns here is not moving. Obviously dry docks is nowhere to go north, so they're not going to move either. But the guy down here in the medium tile is going to move north because there's a door here. So he's going to unlock the door, move into this small tile, and lock the door behind him. So what that tells us is it's most likely there's going to be two enemies in this tile, one enemy in this small tile, and then two enemies in each of these large tiles. Now it's going to be a little, a little tricky because we need to somehow get TNT planted in these large tiles. And I'm not sure how to best do that. Now we have the sapper who's awesome at planting TNT traps. He also starts with two TNT, so we don't even have to go over here to pick up TNT. We could just kind of head out this entrance and head directly to the dry docks, which might be a good plan. Now the sapper, he can actually go through the walls and plant TNT as well. I think our best bet is probably to head north towards that door, uh, silently unlock it if we can, and eliminate some of those uh, enemies there while, we, while there's not too many, and then have the sapper drop some TNT. So let's take a quick look at the commando actions. So generally a commando can perform three actions per turn. And here's a list of the actions. Most actions use one action point. So that makes it really easy. With a couple exceptions. 
You can pick up or drop equipment for zero actions. Uh, so that's one way you can trade items in this game. You can't actually trade directly to other commandos, but you can drop one on the ground and have someone else immediately pick it up. And you can also blow up TNT charge that's been placed on the red side. So what that means, I'll show you later, is um, when you put TNT on the ground, plant it as a trap, you'll flip the token over on the red side and show that it's not equipment you can pick up, it's actually a planned trap. And that costs zero actions. The important thing about this game is anything that costs zero actions, you can do almost any time. I say that as long as you're not interrupting a commando action or an enemy action. So moving takes an action generally, unless you spend an extra action to stay stealthy, moving to medium tiles. Opening, you can open trap doors for an action. You can enter or exit through trap doors for an action. Shooting's an action. Using any equipment you have in your arsenal takes an action. And then if the alarm's active, you can use the action to switch it off. But you can only do that once per terrain. Once you turn it off and the alarm turns back on, uh, the Nazis are smart enough to realize that, hey, you know what? One false alarm might happen, but two false alarms? Nope. They don't believe it anymore. And then there's some other options you may do, depending on the, the scenario you're playing, where you might need more actions to do whatever it says on the card. And then the last thing you can do is you can save an action to get a plus one action token. And that's super useful because you can spend that plus one action uh, for later time, almost any time you want. So let's go and jump into the game. Our first command to go will be our sapper. See in the top left corner, he's got some faded circles. That's where we're going to keep track of our actions. So we have a potential of three actions we can take. Now that's important because as you take wounds, you'll be placing these wound markers on top of those spots, which means you have one less action. So the more wounds you take, the less actions you can take during your turn. But right now we're not wounded, so we can take three actions. Also, some of these uh, spots have a blue and red half and half side. That means you can actually spend an action to save an action in those spots. So normally you can only save one token, but the sapper can actually save two actions between his turns. So first thing first, let's go ahead and enter the tile. You spend one action to, to move into any tile, and you have to place your token into one of the open slots or circles. If all the circles are filled, uh, you cannot enter that tile, and that includes enemies and commandos. And it doesn't matter where you put them in the tile, it's all one area. Now, if you enter a medium tile like this, you immediately become visible. What that means is if you notice on the bottom of his token, this is visible side, he has an eyeball, which means he's visible, and he has alarm token, which means alarm will be triggered and will be spawning more enemies. That's probably not something we want to do right off the bat. So we have an option whenever entering a medium tile to spend an extra action. So this costs two actions to enter that tile stealthily. If you move into a small tile, you always uh, go into stealth as long as you're not visible and there aren't uh, enemies that can spot you. So our sapper has one action left. I think for now, because we kind of want to move uh, methodically, he'll save one of his actions. So I'll store a plus one action on his card like this. And that's going to be our sapper's turn. So the next commander to take his turn will be the scout. A scout has a cool ability where he can spend one action to stealthily move into a medium tile. So he'll go ahead and do that and move into this subtile with the sapper for one action, which is really nice. His second action, I think we'll go ahead and store or save up another um, action, which is super useful in this game, in my opinion. Our scout has one action left. Let's go ahead and move north through this open door into this small tile here. Now how line of sight works in this game is if you can move there, you can shoot. You can see there and shoot there. So even though there's a, a direct line to this uh, Nazi uh, guarding this alarm, he can only see one space to his left and one space to his right. You can't see us even if we were there. But it doesn't matter because we're stealth. And last but not least, I think we'll do the same thing with a medic. He'll spend two actions to enter this tile and spend another action to save an action point. So we're moving slowly metho but methodically in there. That will conclude our commando turn and we'll move on to the enemy phase. So the enemy phase consists of three steps. We'll do reinforcements. We'll throw, draw and place enemies from our enemy bag onto the board. Then after we spawn all of, all of them, we'll go ahead and move them according to visible commandos or if there's no visible commandos, we'll move them in the direction of the compass. 
And last but not least, if there are any visible commandos within range of an enemy, they'll go ahead and shoot. Okay, let's do the reinforcement step. So, because the alarm's not triggered, we will draw one enemy for each of these spawn points over here. So I've got the enemy back here. I'll reach into it. And we'll draw one token for each. Now the key about this is they're double-sided, so don't look at what you're drawing. Just draw it and place it immediately down. Draw one from up there. One for here. One for down here. And lastly, one over here. And since there's space on each of these tiles for these enemies to enter, they will go ahead and enter those tiles. So they will all enter into those tiles like that. So now we have to do movement. How movement works is Nazis will move towards any visible commandos. Fortunately, none of our commandos are visible yet. So then they'll move according to the event card, which told them to move north. So the Nazis in the dry docks cannot move north. There's no spaces up there, so they're going to stay put. Likewise, the Nazis here cannot move north into this dry docks because there's no door. But the Nazi down here in this room can open this door and move into a small tile here. And he locks the door behind him. Doors will always remain locked in the game until a commando unlocks it by shooting the lock with his gun or using a crowbar. And now we'd move on to shooting step, but fortunately... Our commandos are in stealth, so no one will be shot. And then we can check for victory conditions, which we have not blown up the dry docks, so nothing there. And we can move on to the next round. Okay, let's see what our next event is. Special delivery. A resistance fighter wants to talk with you. Should one commando accept, which requires one action, roll two dice. For each four, five, or six, pick up one token from the equipment discard pile. Well, unfortunately, we have not spent any equipment, so this is going to be kind of useless for us. But what we do note is E. So all the enemies, assuming they don't see any commandos, will move east. So we can use that information to our advantage. So now I think we'll stick with our plan and start moving our commandos north to try to see if we can't unlock that dry dock north of us and maybe eliminate some guards and plant the explosives. So let's start with our scout. Our scout can move one action here, another action up here. So that's two of his three actions. Um, I think he'll use his third action, and he can use his crowbar, which is a blue item, so it doesn't get spent. But the, what that means is he can unlock this door silently. If you don't have a crowbar, you would have to shoot the door. And then, depending what item or what gun you have, if it makes noise, it'll trigger the alarm. So that's awesome. So now he's got a ability to look inside there. And I think it's safe. We're next to these enemies, but we know they're moving east. So that's, that's good. They should be moving away from us. So that's going to end the scout's turn. I could use his plus one action, but I think I'll save it in case we need for an emergency. I think we'll go ahead and send our sapper up there as well. So he's going to move... One, two, three, up in that small tile in the corner. And last but not least, we'll send our medic up there as well. So he'll move, also move one, two, three, up in that spot. Let's go ahead and move on to the enemy phase, so enemy reinforcement. So I'll go ahead and grab our enemy bag and reach in and start spawning some enemies. So grab one for the spawn point up here, another one for here, over here, another one for down here. And last but not least, one down here in the corner, right here. There's room for all those enemies to, to enter that tile, so we'll go ahead and enter each of those enemies into that tile. And now we'd move on to enemy movement step. But I think this is where I can show you how those plus one actions work and have a little fun at the same time. So let's look at the medic real quick. So remember how I said with those plus one actions can be used almost any time as long as you're not interrupting an action? We just completed the enemy reinforcement step and now they're going to move. But before they move, we can go ahead and spend this plus one action to do one action as though it was a zero cost action. And so I think we should go ahead and shoot those enemies that just spawned. Now how shooting works in this game is... Here's an example of a normal gun in the game. You look at the bomb section, and it's got three squares. That's how many dice you're going to roll. 
and then the effects of it are on the top part. So if you see an eyeball, that means if I were to fire this this Stig 44, it'll be I'll be visible and alarm will triggered. But if you look at the medic's weapon, he has two squares, so he'll roll two dice, and there are no visibility or alarm tokens on him. So this is a silent weapon. So while those Nazis are in the next room and I've got a line of sight on them, let's go and take a shot at them. So like I said, our weapon uses two dice, so I'll grab two dice. And how do we know if we're going to hit them? We look at the tile. So these guys are on a tile that has a 2+. plus. So that means I need to roll a 2 or higher to be successful to successfully hit them. Uh, the large tiles are always 2+. plus. The small tiles are 4+, plus, so it's hard to hit you because it's, um, it's not as wide open. You're more constrained. And the medium tiles are 3+, plus to hit. So let's go ahead and take aim and roll these dice. Awesome. 3 and a 4, both hits. So now we can choose our targets. I'm going ahead and eliminate uh, both these uh, Nazis here. So now what we do is we take those tokens, add them back into our enemy bag. Now for each enemy eliminated, I will have this loot bag. I'll reach in this loot bag and draw two equipment. And we draw an RPG and another medical bag. And we'll just place those into that tile. So if we take a look at those items down there, uh, the Panzerfoss is actually pretty awesome timing. So what that does is it can cause an explosion from range. So what that means is if we can get in there and pick that up, we don't actually have to go into the next tile to drop a TNT. We actually shoot from range and blow up that tile, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is enemy movement. So we're still stealth. They can't see us, and they're going to move east. So this Nazi is still guarding that, that objective, so he's not going to move at all. Uh, these Nazis can't move any further east, so they're still going to stop there. Uh, these two Nazis are going to move from east. Likewise, this guy's still guarding. He's not moving. And this guy can't move any further east, and same thing with this guy. So that's going to be all the movement, and then we do shooting. Fortune, we're still stealth, so they can't see us. We'll move on to the next turn. Okay, let's see what happens next. We've got company. German High Command sends elite troops in the area. Apparently, remove three regular enemy units picked up from the enemy reserve and place them back into the game box. So what that means is we'll actually have to go into enemy bag and draw three tokens. One, two, three. So these three enemies, which are regular enemies, will get removed from the game. That's bad because if we ever run out of enemies in that box or in that bag, we can lose the game. Now they're going to move south. So as long as they don't see us, they're all going to try and move south. So let's take a quick look at the board and figure out what our plan is. So looking at the board, we actually have some options. And moving south is really nice for us because what that means is most of the guys on this large tile will move down here if they can. So that's really nice. That's going to maybe clear out this area. Um, unfortunately, we still have a guy spawning up here we'll have to deal with. So I think let's try to take advantage of the situation. Since this is mostly empty, we can have our medic take a shot at this lonely guard protecting the dry dock. If he can eliminate him, that'll give free reign for our, our scout to enter there, maybe plant the TNT, and then maybe if he's lucky, we can even use this RPG to blow up this terrain as well. Let's see how that works. So first things first. Let's have our medic take a shot. Let's take advantage of our medic stealth weapon and roll his two dice. He needs a two or higher. Awesome, you got the three. That's what we need to see. So he went ahead and eliminated this uh, Nazi. So we add him back into the reserve bag and then we'll go ahead and draw one loot. So that enemy dropped. Woo, this is an eyeball. What this means is if you eliminated um, a Nazi and there are Nazis left over on that tile the other Nazis that survived saw either the uh, Nazi you took out uh, get killed or saw your fire from so you're, you're now visible fortunately there are no other Nazis on that tile so we can just discard this token and it gets removed out of the game so that's fortuitous so that was our first action from our medic I think the next action he'll do is, now that it's clear, I think he'll go ahead and start um, heading back towards the trapdoor to escape. So he'll spend his other actions to move down 
one, two, down here. And maybe this way you can provide some cover fire from any enemies that happen to march west. I think our next commander to go will be the Sapper. Now Sapper is going to move into this large tile. So he'll move into here. Now anytime you move in a large tile, you immediately become visible. Now unfortunately, that is going to trip the alarm. But I don't think I care so much because we're going to head and cause some explosions this turn anyway, so the alarm is going to be tripped. So how we trip the alarm is we go to the alarm tile, we'll flip this alarm token over. So that means we can actually head to this spot and spend an action to flip it back to its silent state. And all the spawn tokens, everywhere on the round board, will get flipped to the orange side. And what that means is for each of these spots, we'll be spawning two enemies instead of one. But let's go ahead and take advantage of our Sapper special ability. He can, for zero actions, use a TNT marker and place a charge. Normally it takes one action to do so, but for free, he take one of the TNTs he's carrying, flip over the red side, and it's planted. So what that means is it's not something I can pick up because it's the red as opposed to the green, which is something I can pick up and use. Um, but sometime later, for zero actions, the commando can trigger an explosion on that tile. So the sapper has two actions left. I think his next action will be to shoot this door to open it up. That's going to help the scout kind of eliminate that tile. Since it takes zero actions to pick up our drop equipment, we'll spend zero actions to pick up this med, med pack while he's there. We'll pick up that med pack and just place it on his card. And I can place it over any open spot as long as it's not blue like this. So I'll put it right here. So he can still carry a couple more items. But he still has one TNT left over and a grenade. His third action, I think we'll go ahead and leave that area. So his third action, he'll move to the small tile. And anytime you move to small tile and there's no enemies on that destination tile, you can immediately become stealth. So now he becomes stealth. But since we tripped the alarm, the alarm will still be ringing. Also, because there's no enemies on either of these tiles that we moved from or to, we will not have reaction fire. The sapper does have a saved action left. He can use it potentially, but I think he's going to stay there for now. And finally, let's have the scout take his turn. So for the scout's turn, he will also move into large tile, immediately become visible. And this is where the fun begins. For zero actions, he'll pick up the Panzerfaust. Now, a quick note that this Panzerfaust is from an expansion set, so you may not see it if you buy only the core set, but it's a lot of fun because... We'll go ahead and spend this right away for his second action to use it on this tile and shoot this area to immediately cause an explosion. There's no dice you roll, you just cause an explosion. So every enemy is eliminated. Because this is and includes our objective tokens, so that's awesome. We eliminate that as well. And because this is a big explosion, we don't actually drop any loot. Now, due to our special scenario conditions, once you have an explosion on these tiles, you remove that tile from the game and any tile, any uh, tokens adjacent to that. So yeah, we totally wiped out that area and all those Germans with them. And now our scout will quickly get, get out of there. So he'll spend his third action to move in the small tile, immediately become stealth. And he has one action saved up, but that's okay. I think we'll save it for now. That will end our commando phase. Now we have to move on to enemy reinforcement. Since the alarm is triggering, we'll draw two enemies for each of these spawn points. So reach into our bag, I'll draw two tokens here, draw up here, two tokens down here by the alarm, and finally two tokens down here. Now there's room on all these tiles for them to enter, so they will head and enter each of those tiles. Now you may be wondering, well, wait Steve, why didn't you blow up the TNT earlier? Well, this is why. Remember I said you can spend uh, zero actions any time as long as you don't interrupt a step to blow up this tile as well. So for zero actions, see ya Nazis. Boom. And we just cleared both objectives. So alarms blurring, docks are, are sunk, and now we just have to get out of here. But first, let's finish up the enemy step. They are frantically wanting to find us, but they don't know where we are. All they know is the explosions happened, the docks are gone. No one's visible, so they will look at the event card, and they need to move south. So what that means is this enemy is going to move south into this room here, and everyone else is going to stay where they are. 
Let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. Okay, let's see what event we draw. During enemy movement step, one commando wearing a German uniform may move up to six enemy units of their choice that are not protecting a triangular token or onto adjacent tile. So that's really cool. You can actually, if you're dressed as a German officer, you can actually fool the Germans and uh, move them around. But for us, that's not going to matter. So now to complete this terrain, we need to get all our commandos to safety. So let's go ahead and start with our medic. He's going to spend uh, one action, he'll become visible, and a second action to leave through that uh, trap door. Once you leave through trap door, you move him from the board, and then next turn, you can re enter through another trap door. But it doesn't matter, he's just escaping. So let's try to get, see if we can get our other commandos out. Our scout will move one, two, three. And then he has a saved plus one action. He'll spend that to also escape through the trap door. Likewise, our sapper, one, two, three, and he has a plus one to escape through the trap door. And there you are, folks. We completed the shipyard. So a nice thematic touch of this game is if you flip over the cards, they have some really awesome artwork showing what you've done. So you can see the dry docks we exploded. For the next two terrain in Operation Grail, we'll be taking on the docks and water tower. For the docks, it's best if we only send one commando there to not immediately trip the alarm. And his goal will be to rescue or escort a admiral from uh, this tile to an exit point. The other two commandos will head to the water tower and they're gonna to have to move an anti-tank gun to the other side of the map and take out a water tower, which contains a sniper. And during that time, uh, the snipers can be try targeting them, so if they ever become visible, they'll be taking shots at them. So what I'd like to do is ask for help again, and help me decide which commando to send on a solo mission to the docks, while the other two take out the water tower. So leave your suggestion in the comments below, and I'll see you at the next stop. Fire!